Hi guys, I'm Blackie and welcome back to the channel. Okay, I was recently at the Georgia Bushcraft Gathering and I would like to give you a little bit of an update on that. Um, I went up on Thursday and I was going to be camping with my niece, Trinity Sainer, of Ready Made Gear. And I also got to camp with my other two nieces of Heather and Carrie. And uh, it was a really good time. According to the guy up on the stage with the loudspeaker when they were doing their big presentations and stuff, this was the biggest one they've ever had. And it was a, the field was full. Uh, lots and lots of really good vendors. Lots and lots of uh, people there camping and enjoying and taking classes. It really was a good gathering. I uh, put on three classes. Um, one of which was the women in woods, women in woodscraft, you know, the modern thing. It was a discussion panel, and there was three ladies, which were Jax, Janega, I hope I got that right, Jax Janega, and Trinity Sainer, and Mel of the Mountains, and we had. Oh, probably about a dozen ladies on the first class and it was talking about that according to people who compile such statistics 60% of all new hunters and fishermen are women and it's the largest growing part of our hobby is women coming in and so it was a discussion panel on what you know what what to get how to get into it for the ladies you know how to deal with certain obstacles and things like that, that, uh, you know, how do you get involved? How do you get into doing woodcraft? How do you deal with uh, packs and stuff like that? And, you know, do you, you feel like, you know, a woman alone traveling where Jack's, I mean, she's going and hiking in the Arctic Circle, hiked out of Iceland, hiked in Sweden. You know, she goes to Europe and goes on these things. She goes out west, Canada, and etc. Goes on these big, epic, you know, hikes, as well as being a touring instructor, teaching people bushcraft, woodscraft. And then there's Trinity, who is actually a competition person that came out of track and field stuff, and she loves going to the Pathfinder uh, gathering just to compete in the challenges. That's her big drive, and plus she's now got her own business where she's creating. Uh, products for the outdoors, not just for women, but you know, etc. And she's a hunter that's got a bear and a huge buck already in November. By November, so she's a she's a stone cold killer. You know, when we talk about going hunting, she has taken deer with muzzle loaders, bows, uh, rifles, and shotguns and handgun. She is a hunter. And then there's Mel who Mel came out of the uh, radio industry as being a radio personality and then got into baking and became her own baker uh, of making cakes and custom orders and stuff like that and now she does buckskins where she's teaching classes on how to process hides, how to turn hides into usable clothing and etc. So that was the panel and we had a lot of really good discussion from the ladies in the audience back and forth with the panel, which is, I was just kind of being the devil's advocate. I got the ball rolling, and then I would step back and I would ask questions at the panel um, to keep the ball rolling, and then the ladies would interact with each other, and if it kind of, you know, stalled out, so to speak, which it very rarely did, uh, I would throw a new fresh question in there. And so my job was kind of like uh, Mater D on the side, you know, but it was a very good classes. Uh, and there were a lot of very good classes at this event. Um, I got to meet a lot of, run into a lot of people I hadn't seen in a long time, like Bushcraft Barton. Me and him met at the 2016 Pathfinder. It was the first time we met, and I think I've got to see him like twice since then. Uh, my good friend, uh, Jay Hercules of Possum Pouch, who makes my bags out of Wheeling, West Virginia, was there and uh, I was tickled to see him he recently got out of the hospital and uh, you know just to be able to sit around a fire with your friends and talk it was wow 
I mean, the days seem to go by like that. I was there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and left at lunch on Sunday. And it seemed to go by like in five minutes. I mean, remember when you were a kid and you'd get out of school for the whole summer and it seemed like summer went by on fast forward and the rest of the school year was on dead slow? That's what it was like. It just The, the sun came up and everybody was up getting breakfast, getting ready to go to Trader's Row, do whatever. And then five minutes later, it seemed it's you know, midnight and everybody's going to bed. It just, it was high speed the whole time. And uh, if you've never been to one of the Georgia Bushcraft events, gatherings, I really recommend it. I really, really do. There's a lot of really good things. Food vendors, uh, knife dealers, craft stuff. I mean, just too much to mention. If you go look up uh, Georgia Bushcraft Gathering, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of videos. I didn't. To be honest, I was so busy, I didn't have time to walk around with a camera. Um, I probably met two or three hundred new people I've never met before that follow my channel and want to come up and say hello and meet me in person. You know, I want to take a picture with you and let's, let's talk this. And I got a question and we talked about cap and ball guns. We talked about knives. We talked about fire steels, tents, tarps, hammocks. It, it was just a blast. Really, really was. So, if you've, uh, like I said, never been to one, go to one. Really. I think it's one of the best events I've ever been to in the country. It really was. I uh, got to talk to Joshua Barnes of the Woods Runner School, and hopefully I'll be working with him in the coming year. We'll work out some time for me to come up and you know, come up to his school, maybe do some classes or something with him. Uh, a lot of people came up that had wanted to go to the Silver Wolves up in Ohio the weekend before, but just couldn't make it or whatever. And so there was a lot of discussion with that. That was a big success. And I mean, a, a little bit of an update. Blackie's tired. <laughs> um, in October, we had my impromptu gathering. And so I had said as my, my New Year's resolution this year was I was going to camp at least two days every month, no matter what. I knew I'd do more than that. But I wanted to do every single month, do at least two days. And January, I went to Mississippi and camped with my good friend, uh, William Collins, Homer Mayo, and Mr. John Pinkard at a state, excuse me, at a state park over there. That was a lot of fun. It got down in the 20s, and I was in my hammock. And then in February, I did the Duggar Mountain Frozen Foot, was at the uh, Southeast Bushcraft Base Camp. And that, we figured it got down, it was 26 at the bottom of the mountain, and we're a thousand feet or more in elevation above that, so they figured it was like um, six that night on top of the mountain. That was a lot of fun. That was the first time I used a hot tent uh, with the wood stove in it, and that worked really, really well. And then March, I did my gathering, and that was a week I was camping, a whole week. Then April, I went back out and camped for four days. May, I camped three days. June, I camped two days. July, uh, excuse me, no, June, I camped four days because I did Pathfinder. It was June this year. July, I camped two. August, I camped two. September, man, I, I know I camped. Yeah, that was, that was four days in September I camped. Then October, I did my six days, seven days, six days. For my impromptu gathering, it wasn't a gathering, but we'll call it Miss Pam's gathering. Um, so that was uh, right out of four weeks. We'll call that six days I was out there. Then I went in the end of October and went up and we did the Silver Wolves, and that was four days. And now in November, I've done four days with 
the uh, Georgia bushcraft. I've got another three-day weekend coming up, the weekend before Thanksgiving, that I'm going to be teaching uh, privately with a small group. And then December, December I got a hunting camp that I'm going to go and, and camp out for three days. So that's, that's going to be my year in camping. So yeah, I've been in the woods a lot. And uh, right now is my busy time of the year. And it's just been go, 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 go. I was in uh, Ohio for the Silver Wolf and came home, was home two days, and I left out and went to George Bushcraft. So it's 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 been a good year. It really has. I spent that got to spend a lot of time out and that was my goal. Spend as much time as I could in the woods. Of course I still gotta come in and do videos and stuff. Um, and as you notice in a lot of my videos I'm wearing the same clothes because it I get the time where I can go spend the day making videos and then tomorrow's this and tomorrow's that and we all live in the real world, don't we? It just gets in the way of having fun, doesn't it? But anyway, uh, Georgia was really good. Everything has gone good this far. What's coming up? We'll do that, turn this into a little bit of the update. Uh, January, I may be going back to camp out in Mississippi with William Collins and Homer. We will see. Uh, I may be doing the frozen foot this year, and coming year in February. March, I'm going to the expo in Kentucky. Uh, I'm going to be vendoring there, and I don't think I'm teaching a class, but I uh, was asked to come to it, so I'm going to be going to that. Then April will be my next gathering, and we will be doing a Silver Wolves on the first weekend of that which I'll make all these official announcements later. Just I'm kind of giving you a, a peek behind the curtain. Then in May, I'm going to uh, Pathfinder and going to be teaching a class at Pathfinder. Uh, Dave asked me to do a couple of classes at that. And that's what I got thus far. So I got quite a bit going between now and next you know, next June. I don't think I have anything planned after June uh, at the present day, but things just roll in. Like I said, I talked to Joshua Barnes, and so we might very well be doing uh, something together in the near future. With that, I'll probably be doing the uh, a Silver Wolf class with James Bender next fall. We'll figure out if September, October, whatever day is good for him. Uh, because he teaches a lot of classes up there, and we got to kind of dial it in between. So that's that's the rough itinerary that we've got right now. Um, the haversacks and rucksacks, we're going to be a little bit late. We said we'd do it in the middle. Of, they'd be shipping out in the middle of November. We're still going to be doing them in November, but Jay Hercules, who makes my bags, had to go into the hospital to have gallbladder removed. And so it put him a little bit behind, but he was at the uh, Georgia gathering. He assures me, he says, I will have them for you by the end of the month. I will complete the order by the end of the month. And so as, uh, as they arrive to me, normally they start coming in in like two and three shipments because it's just such a big box if you put them all in one and that risks everything being lost and that's, that's bad. So we break it up into smaller so that if worse came to worse, if a box disappeared into the ether of UPS or whatever, we'd only have to, to hurry, hurry, make up like 10, as opposed to the whole order's gone, you know what I mean? We all live in the real world. So if you've ordered a uh, Blackbird or a Nighthawk, it will, it, everything, knock wood, it will ship this month to you. So you will have it before Christmas. And as soon as they show up, I will immediately ship them out. I've already got your shipping envelopes already labeled and ready to go. All I gotta do is fold it up, put it, slap it, and take it to the post office. So, as soon as it gets here. Again, I'm sorry for the delay. Life happens, Jay had to have his gallbladder out. So that kind of put us a little bit behind. Um, 
Other than that, everything's going for it. So, if you know of some event near you that you would like to get together, let me know. Uh, I've also, uh, at Georgia Bushcraft, was talking to uh, Rewild, who's out of Rewild Outdoors, he's out of North Florida. That me and him become friends, and I hope to work with him, possibly go down sometime in the coming year, and uh, before it gets too hot down in North Florida or whatever, and me and him's gonna do a little swamp camping and stuff down there around that stuff. You know, just a little change of environment a little bit. And uh, we're gonna see. We're gonna see what we can do. Thank you guys so very much for supporting my channel. Really, I appreciate every bit of it. And if there's anything I can do to help you, please reach out, ask. I'll do what I can. Uh, I've been asked uh, to do a podcast for the virtual campfire with a gentleman. And as soon as I find out the exact details, I will put that out so you can go check that out. He's going to interview me. He recently interviewed Dave Canterbury. And he does... Uh, early 1920s camping reenactment. And I've got a lot of background in reenactment and I played with a lot of that gear. Uh, so I think he's gonna try to talk to me as an old timer that sort of a, I guess, a, a connection back to those people that actually did it in the 20s. Because when I was coming up, those were the grandparents and the, in some cases the parents of, of around me and the great uncles and stuff that did all that stuff. So. I think it'll be a fun time, but I'll announce on social media and I'll probably put out a video here letting everybody know when it's going to happen so you can tune in. Thank you so much, guys, and please have a good holiday. Please spend time with your family. Tell them you love them. You don't know how long any of us have got. So if they matter to you, tell them about it. Until next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.